Did you notice that in the word audio, there is an A and an I, like AI at the edge? Kevin Say is here to show us how to use audio on an IoT Edge device like this one. Hey everyone, you're watching the IoT Show, and because I'm wearing my AI on the Edge t-shirt, we're going to talk about AI on the Edge today. Uh, I have Kevin with me. Kevin, thanks for coming back to the IoT Show today. Absolutely. So you're seeing the camera, you've seen it again, and no, we will not do vision on that device, even if it's the Vision AI dev kit. What we're going to use is the microphone, and this is what Kevin came here to talk to us about today. Thanks, Kevin, for coming to the show again. Great, love to be here. You're exactly right. Love the Vision AI dev kit, love the name. But there's lots of use cases where we can look at audio as well, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn about audio, which is very similar to Vision. I interesting. So it's similar to Vision, but I'm starting to you know try and understand like audio, like what's going on with audio in general that you could eventually leverage for you know, sure. your devices. There's some advantages that audio has that Vision doesn't have. Okay. Now, you use the right tool for the right job. Okay. Example: If it were dark in this room right now, mm -hmm. a camera doesn't really help you much. Okay. Yeah. A camera has one field of vision. Uh huh. Right. Audio hears from 360 degrees. Okay. Right. So you have light differences. You have you know the fact that you can pick up from many different areas. There's a cost difference. Mm -hmm. Right. Microphones are very inexpensive, where cameras can be very expensive. Right. Okay. So there's lots of use cases where you might use audio instead. Interesting. Well, so I always have the perception that audio might not be as accurate or might not like retain as much data as, as video would. Is that a true statement of feeling? I, I think there's a lot of falsehood there, okay. right? Um, there are certain things where you and I can hear. Let me give you an example. It's a great example. Okay. I, I have a dog at home. Well, technically my daughter has a dog at home. She takes okay. care of him, but he's in my house. When my wife drives home from school every day, mm -hmm. that dog goes crazy around 4.15 when he hears her car. We never taught him as her car. Right? But he hears it. Mm -hmm. So that sound is there. Right? So okay. it's just amazing to see those things that happen. We can all reflect back to an animal kind of responding to something, right? Sure, uh, sure. You're hearing something, right? When you were young, when the garage door opened, you knew your parents were home, clean up your room quickly, all those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, right? stop the video games. Uh, <laughs> no, just, uh, yes. My kids are doing that. I'm exactly. sure. Yeah, smart kids. So uh, audio is just different. Right. Okay. There are certain use cases. Think about uh, an oil and gas industry, right? Mm -hmm. Where you might have a, a pump out there, okay. right? That's pumping oil out of the ground, right? When you listen to a pump, if it's running out of oil or something or having a bearing issue, it sounds different. Oh. Think yeah. about your car for a second, right? Mm -hmm. If I could listen to your car and hear a whining of like an alternator or something, yeah, yeah. very different. But the difference is that if I want to sample what an oil and gas uh, pump is pumping, mm -hmm. or your car alternator, those kinds of things, I'd have to have some kind of digital sensor on each one of those. A mm -hmm. camera doesn't help me because I can't see in there. Yes. But I can hear it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting point of view, right? Some use cases, it's amazing for, right? It's not right for all use cases. Okay. So uh, it's just interesting, very different. Yeah, interesting use cases, definitely. Yeah. The interesting point that I see, yeah. when we hear sound, we typically put like a wave file, right? Yeah. That's a pretty full fidelity, yeah. not really compressed down, mm -hmm. but it has all the features in there, those things that we need, the pitches, all those kinds of things. Okay. And we have libraries that will take that wave file and we'll convert it to that same kind of uh, numeric array that we do with images. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario, the practices and patterns you use from a machine learning of video and audio are identical. Mm. I just take yeah, my yeah. video or image or my audio, convert it into that uh, file format, that array, and then I can use in most any machine learning pattern for that. And we'll see that today. Okay. Well, I want to see it. Absolutely. Let's first start with, with kind of understanding the, the, the difference. So okay. what I want to do is I want to play a couple sounds for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to see if you can tell me the difference and describe the difference. Okay. Set the stage for a second. I have a, uh, a fountain yeah. that runs water and fountains, okay. you know, through evaporation okay. run out of water. Okay. Tell me if you can tell the okay. difference. Everyone pay attention. Yes, exactly. Okay. Not asking you to really yeah. identify it yet, we're going to compare. Great. I want to compare this one. Not the same. 
clearly a different sound. No, one is Coke and one is Pepsi. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> They're different sounds. When we yes. use machine learning, though, let's think about the alternator on your vehicle for a second, right? Mm -hmm. If I have enough sound samples of it in the right performing characteristics, and then I have sound samples of bearings going out, I can then train a model to understand it. Totally. Pretty totally. simple stuff. And actually, our brain is trained to that. You can sometimes feel there's a difference or something not right. Yeah. And you you have a hard time identifying what it is. It's like the little noise at night in your home. Yeah. There's a dripping, you know, uh, uh, you know, rubbing it somewhere. That actually, you hear because it's different from the usual, even if there's the usual noises in the house, right? Absolutely. Sound can be applied to most anything, mm -hmm. right? So the right tool for the right job, but yep. don't overestimate what sound can do. Okay, interesting. So let's jump into just a couple things then. Mm -hmm. So I put together a GitHub site, kind of walking yep. through the sample I'm going to walk us through. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is an eight foot tall fountain in my house, right? Okay. But the, the goal here is to prove that we can understand sample differences. Mm -hmm. So we'll have this, the URL will be on yeah. posted, yep. but we're going to break it down into five different category, uh, steps we, uh, we'll build a model. Okay. First one is we need to acquire sound samples. Okay. Okay. In this scenario, I ran the fountain for 30 days straight and sample was full all the way down to empty. Okay. So uh, pretty linear, pretty straightforward, we get mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Then once I've done that, I'll actually, what we call label those sound samples. Mm -hmm. This one's 100%, this one's 0%, something in the middle is the d different number. So I'll okay. label it. Okay. Once I've done that, I can actually use Azure Machine Learning to build the model. In this scenario, I fed it almost 4,000 sound samples. Okay. 15 second wave files. Can you get files, your kids to do Just that? what you hear there. Because 4,000 is a lot of them, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it is a lot of them, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of samples, yes. Try to leave her. <laughs> yes. It, what we've done here, though, is we've just kind of labeled them all out. Mm -hmm. And I have a script that labels them. So okay. instead of me script. having have my script. kids, because I know the first one's 100%, I know the last one's 0%. Yeah. And I can know mathematically between. So uh, that's step two in this whole process is label them. Love it. Uh, the third step is we take all those files and oh. use Azure Machine Learning, we build the model. Yeah. So once we take all those WAVE files and break them into mm -hmm. that, that numerical array, I can use standard practice. So Azure Machine Learning will build the model for us. Okay. Watch you through that. And the fourth and fifth step won't really go over here, but I take those models, I can push them at the edge. Okay. That's the important that piece, device. right? Yes. A smaller device is able to run it. With that, let's kind of jump right into that. Okay. So I, I mentioned there are five steps. Yep. I've actually broken down, if you look here in the samples area, we have nice. five different steps. First okay. one's audio acquisition. Okay. I want to quickly walk through what that is, right? Mm -hmm. So in here, this is actually we're in Python. Mm -hmm. These settings here are actually taking that microphone and, and uh, turning up the gain so I can okay. hear what I want to hear. Okay. Right? So once I've done that, just kind of go on the very bottom here, it will simply go through a loop. The okay. loop will say every 15 seconds, I want to run a command that will record sound. Okay. I'll then upload those to an Azure blob storage. Okay. And you did that directly on that guy, right? Absolutely. Okay. For 30 days straight. Right. And it's like cameras. When you do this kind of work at creating models based uh -huh. on data, whether uh -huh. it's video or audio, it's yeah. better if you use it in the conditions that actually you will need at the end of the day, right? For the models to really apply on that type of data. That's probably one of the most important things. Yeah. Right, because this has a unique microphone, and you think about a power supply running next to it. it has a unique buzz or all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Just like the camera, right? Yeah. There may be a smudge over the, mm -hmm. the lens or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be, because yeah. that's going to be the best data you can get. For that device in that context. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, yeah, what's interesting though, that with, with machine learning in the cloud, you can right. actually then aggregate with data from other cameras in other locations and then make these models even more rich and, and better trained. Absolutely. But back to the car example, right? Mm -hmm. If I had a microphone in your car, mm -hmm. I could understand the patterns of your car compared to other patterns and see similarities because an alternator, as an example, the yeah, bearing yeah. would sound similar across all vehicles. Yep, yep. It's that reuse across all of them. Love it. We're digressing. Let's go back. <laughs> Great. Step number two. So, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> step one's uh, uh, audio file acquisition, run for 30 days, I get all I want. Yep. Step two, we'll label the files. In this scenario, we run this very simple Python script. Yep, yep. It does the same thing. It takes a storage container blob mm -hmm. in Azure yep. and we'll label them all and put them okay. to a different container. Okay. S simple, simple stuff there. Simple. Uh, the, the next one is we'll actually build the model. Mm -hmm. So there's two steps to this uh, in this area. One is that I have a, it's called run.py. It actually will, will build, train the model. Okay. Right? And the other one that I call uh, build networks with Azure, mm -hmm. it actually sets up all the Azure scaffolding, all okay. the process and whatever. Okay. So in this scenario, we actually will use a, uh, a NVIDIA GPU. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, once again, the power of public cloud, yeah. I couldn't get my manager to authorize me spending about $10,000 on GPU for some reason. I don't know why. I, I know, I know. It's surprising. I know. <laughs> he, he, yes, exactly. <laughs> but I can spend about a buck running in Azure. Worth very it. different story. Worth it. And, and once he knew about that price difference, I really couldn't get him to pay $10,000 <laughs> for a GPU. <laughs> and your colleagues hate you now. Yes. They can't even yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But what we're doing here is we're taking all this data, these 4,000 mm -hmm. images, we're throwing up on a NVIDIA GPU, and we'll crank through it in about an yep. hour. Okay. And at the end of that, we'll see that it'll kick out the models that are needed, right? Okay. For it. very inexpensive. Okay. And, and the, at the end of it, it will actually build that model. Mm -hmm. It exports the model out as a zip file. Yep. And then I just push that to the edge. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. So let's see that kind of in action for a second, okay. right? I want to show a, a couple of items here. Mm -hmm. We talked about this being on the intelligent edge. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. But for this demonstration, because it's a containerized workload, mm -hmm. I'm running on this device. Okay. So I'm running it anywhere. That's and we'll fair. see at the very top, I named it audio. It's about 0 0.2 or 0.02% CPU. Yep. I'm going to feed it a file here. I'm okay. going to feed it the file I call full. Okay. So what we'll see there is that CPU is actually going to spike up to 100% now. Okay. Okay. Because it's actually going through something. its inferencing. Yep. yep. Loading the model. Love it. Taking the file, and this is a comeback label of 100, 100%, and the accuracy level, the score is 73%. Right. There's okay. always a varying level, right? So the more data you have, maybe the better scores you might have. Okay. So also look at that was the one called full. Yeah. I'm gonna use one called half. Just to remind people, you're sending noises that are at different stages of the fountain, you know, fullness, would say. Absolutely. Right? Okay. It's the same files we listened to earlier, the yeah. exact yeah. same yeah. files, yeah. right? So we see this one here called half, labeled 60, is yeah. uh, the score 99% of that, right? Nice. I also have another right. one called other. Okay, other. Random. So uh, by full and half, we obviously know what those might be, but yeah. other, we don't know. So we'll see, we'll push that mm -hmm. to the edge again. Scoring at the edge is what we're doing here. I'm oh, showing it on this device for simplicity's sake, so I don't have them plugged in. And it's instant. Yeah, absolutely. And all these models, though, would be downloaded. That's what IoT Edge will do, though. It does model management, right? Yep. Make sure the right model's down yes. there because it gets better over time. Yep. So great stuff there. So th there we see that I pushed the one called Other up there. Yep. It appears to be at 100 level and yep. a very different score. So it's, it's a different file. It's a there. new one. Yep, exactly. Love it, Kevin. So kind of jump through. I want to show one other yep, thing. Yeah, yeah. I want to jump into. So I've already shown you the uh, uh, the GitHub side. Yep. I'm going to jump in Azure portal for a second. I want to show just a couple things yes, on Azure yes, Machine yes. Learning. Show me, show uh, Ted, may, uh, Ted may have already shown those, but we're going to see them here. Well, doesn't hurt. Give me a second here to log in to where I want to be. Um, and this is, when I run the script, it's actually making the model, the experiment, so what they call it. So that's what we'll look at okay. here in just a second. So I call it uh, Audio Workspace. Mm -hmm. I can name my experiment. So we'll quickly mm -hmm. jump to that. This experiment I ran, I called Experiment 2, uh, Curious, which is the uh, framework I was using here for this. Okay. We'll jump through and we'll see kind of how long it took. So I have my Experiment 2. And we'll see here in this experiment, it took, uh, I had one that was completed there. I'm going to scroll down. It took 25 minutes to run this particular one, Got right? It. And, and so it tells you how fast it can run, what the experience was, that scenario. Mm -hmm. I, I could also look at, let me click on go into that one. We'll see that when that one ran, it ran on a cluster. So my cluster here happened to have yep, yep. Uh, cluster six, I'll show you in a second. And I want to go one last time in the log files. In here, if I uh, jump over to the individual log files, it shows all the things, things that happen in the cloud. Because okay. it spun off a lots of containers mm -hmm. to go build this. Yep. And if we look here at the very last item there, it had a 98% accuracy level. So after iterating through thousands and thousands yep, yep. of building, it built that. Awesome. So again, what we saw here is the fact that using just these five steps, mm -hmm. I can acquire the data, I can build the model, I can do scoring at the edge. Yep. Just an example, now clearly our watchers would not have my fountain in their house Probably not. You but know. imagine how you can apply it to anything. Yeah. Right? I love that. And you don't, you don't need to be a data scientist to really Ab understand how that's working. Absolutely. A great starting point. Yep. A lot of what Azure Machine Learning does, though, it really helps you get started, right? I've tried to kind of document, mm -hmm. you know, what's mm -hmm. going on in that area, but it allows a skilled data scientist to take that and to go the next step. Pretty interesting stuff. I love it. Thanks, Kevin. If people want to get to that GitHub repo, they can go to aka.ms slash IoT show slash audio on IoT Edge. Thanks again for coming. Thanks. I look forward to you coming with more of these AI at the Edge. Demos. We'll have more toys, more Edge, more AI stuff coming. Love it. Can't wait. Thanks for watching the IoT show. See you soon, guys.